What is up everybody? My name is Lithius and welcome to Roots Ready. I am going to be doing some repotting today. I recently went to the Another Plant Swap event for the second time and came back home with some lovely, lovely plants. Now some of them like this one, this Philodendron White Princess uh, is in moss and perlite, not a substrate that I'm particularly used to. So I'm going to go ahead and change that over into some really good soil. I'll tell you exactly what soil that is in a second. Um, and I've got some Hoya cuttings. This one's in soil so that I can go straight into a pot. Um, this is the uh, Rotista, which is in moss. So I'll move that over. And we've got the Hoya Bella or CV Mini Bell over here, which I'm going to move uh, into some soil as well. Um, we've got quite a few things. I've got some... Hoya obovata has been propagating at this point for about three months. <laughs> and last but not least, this is the one I'm a little bit nervous to propagate, but it's this one right here. This is my Anthurium cuticuens. It's growing quite well. We've got some new growth coming in as well. Gonna make some cuttings and move those into their own pot. The soil I'm gonna be using today is from none other than Soil Ninja. Soil Ninja really came through. Um, I met the guys at the Another Plant Swap event. Lovely, lovely people, the nicest people you'll ever meet. And they actually sent me some really cool samples to try out in my own collection. As I've said in a previous video, um, when pond doesn't work, uh, check that out in the link above. Um, I am starting to move some of my plants away from semi-hydro, some of them, into soil. So for example, I've got this one, which is the Anthurium and Orchid mix. I've got another one here, which is the Monstera and Philodendron mix. So these two are for the plants that I'm gonna be keeping in soil, moving into soil. And I also got some semi-hydro, some uh, semi-hydro uh, mix as well. This one is a slightly thicker grade. You can see that the rocks are a little bit bigger compared to this one where it's a, a little bit finer. So I can then pick and choose exactly what plants I want to grow in what medium. As I said, I tend to stick to pond for my anthuriums just because I find that it, they do want to retain to, uh, a lot more water. Um, so I'm going to do that going forward. And then I also got a little bag of zeolite as well, which is fantastic. So let's get started. I've switched things up a little bit. I've got this little plastic container just to contain some of that soil because what you guys don't see is after the video there's a lot of mess that I've got to actually sweep up and for those of you who've been watching my channel for a long time you're going to be familiar with my little red shears <laughs> that I've been using since I've started this channel I've actually upgraded this to some proper shears so they'll still be here for the smaller more delicate snips and cuts that I need to do but as I've said I've upgraded to a proper pair of shears. I feel like a proper gardener now. So the first plant I'm gonna be repotting are these Obovata cuttings. I'm gonna take a look at the length of the stem just because I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to fit them in a small pot like this because space, sort of shelf space is quite uh, kind of a premium at the moment. So if I can fit them in here, perfect. If not, I'm gonna have to put them in here. Slightly bigger, which means I will take up more space, but you know, we'll see what happens. I can see that I've got some springtails on the leaves. The reason why I propagated these was I had a root mealy bug issue, so I had to move them over quite quickly. So I'm just gonna make sure that before I put these up again, that that is gone. Now I can see some some insects on here, but I think that's just um, they're springtails. Completely harmless to your plant, which is a good thing, which means that I can go ahead and pot these up. So I'm gonna try to remove these from, from the pot without damaging any of the roots. And that should be as easy as that. All right, let's separate these. Give me a better understanding, a better view of what I'm working with. So again, I'm just looking at the roots just to see if there's any signs of any mealy bugs. They've been growing in water, so I don't think that there should be anything. It doesn't hurt to be safe. I'm gonna pot these up now. So I'm gonna use this. This is Soil Ninja Soil. They were giving out free samples at the event. Um, so I am gonna use this one first and foremost, just because, yeah, I need to use up what's in this bag already. 
We're gonna put them all in this pot just because it's a bit too tight in that one. For this plant, I'm gonna use the orchid and anthurium soil mix because I know that these plants, Hoyas, um, you know, you can treat them like orchids. Some people do grow theirs in bark, I don't. So we're just gonna try to give it that really good, well drained in soil mix. Make sure all the leaves are out. Tap it down and then we'll get these other ones secured in. After a very messy uh, transfer, here we are. I think this is gonna do for now. Uh, we'll just get this watered in at the end. Up next, I'm gonna do this Hoya CV Bella. And see, the knife still comes in handy. So we will get this opened up. As you can see, this is in already a lovely uh, barky soil mix so we'll just continue to use that don't want to create any unnecessary waste perfect look at that lovely done we'll open up this one this is the hoya bella we just want to transfer that over just like that oh there's two wow Look at that, there's another peduncle down here. Fantastic. I don't know if you can see it, but let me show you. So that's one peduncle here, and there's another peduncle over here. So this plant's already ahead of the game. Wow, lovely. Now I kind of don't want to bury that peduncle now, so I'm just gonna <laughs> try to lift the plant up ever so slightly out of the pot. There we go. Another one. This one is the Hoya. Rotista. So I'm gonna carefully take this one out of the moss. I am going to remove as much of the moss as possible. And I think I'm gonna try to bury it sort of kind of like that because the roots are growing out on the stem. So I'm just gonna, instead of putting it straight down like that, I'm gonna put it on its side. So I'll grab some more of my soil ninja mix. Place this like so. Then I'll add some more just to backfill. Backfill like so. Then some more under here. Lovely. Look at that. So that's good to go. So now we're going to get into this. Philodendron Pink Princess. Let's try to cut that open. I don't like to damage these, these cups because they do come in very useful if you want to propagate anything else. Sometimes if you want to ship a plant, you might need a container. So I try my best to keep these in as good a shape as possible. I can tell that this is very well root rooted in here. And what I'm gonna try to do is just massage the roots like so. My technique is just giving it a bit of a squeeze, a shake. Um, if the roots are not ready, that's okay. Just leave it, keep squeezing. The perlite will fall out and that will make way for the moss to come out afterwards. And I mean, you really can, if you wanted to, continue to grow your plants in moss. A lot of people do it with great success. Uh, just for me, I like to have a routine and um, having my plants in particular substrates just helps me achieve that. And that routine is based around the watering, um, how often I want to water my plants. I really don't want to be watering my plants every day. I don't want them to sit in water for too long because, you know, I'm not living in like a particularly super hot climate where the plants are really going through that water. For philodendron, I think soil is that mix, that well-draining soil is the uh, the route I tend to go down. I'm going to use this pot which housed a previous philodendron, <laughs> which is no longer with us, RIP. And I'm going to grab the Soil Ninja philodendron and monstera mix and as you can see this one is less barky um, than the anthurium mix which is quite cool to see and I can I can kind of imagine that there's a lot of science that goes into this from the guys at Soil Ninja so if you're considering if you're looking for soil mixes I'll definitely recommend them because you can 
pretty much guarantee that you're going to get your plants are going to get exactly what they need in these soil mixes. Then I'm just going to wrap the plants around like so and backfill. Sometimes I really do love it when a repotting just comes together. That was really easy to do. Fantastic. Look at that. Take off some of that uh, the soil off of those leaves. A lot of white coming through on these plants. Wow. Hmm. That might not be great for photosynthesis, but great for photos. I'll tell you that. So we now have got the Anthurium cuticuense out. I'm going to be firstly removing this plastic wrap. Lots of um, roots going on at the back of the plant. I don't know if the camera will pick it up, but lots and lots of roots. In fact, these are actually wrapping around the outside of the moss pole. So I think I need to make some propagations of this plant before it's too late. Now, I think the first thing I'm gonna do is just sort of, you can see there's this leaf over here, which is starting to yellow. Um, I'm not gonna, have this as its own plant so everything above this leaf can be cut and i'm looking for the node and the node is this one here so this is where the leaf comes out from so if i make any cuts it's gonna have to be above this because i wouldn't make this its own plant just because i think it will really struggle um, to push out anything i think the first thing i'm going to do is just use my brand new shears <laughs> And I am going to make a cut just above that leaf. This is the leaf. This is its petiole here. This is the stem. This is where it was, uh, it, it's growing from. So what I'll do is I'll just make a cut just above where that leaf is. I don't want to cut anything else. I don't want to damage any of the, of the leaves. Actually, I think I'll go back to my trusty shears. Just because it's such a tight space, I think it's better if I come in with these smaller scissors here. There we go. So now that's been severed, decapitated. I'm going to now remove this tape and see if I can detach the plant from the moss pole, which I think is going to be harder than I thought. I've used plant cables here to sort of secure this, um, this shut. So luckily, I can just sort of undo these plant ties to get the plant out, which is great. Okay, so slight change of plan. I am gonna actually have to remove all of the ponds from this plant. So as you can see, the roots are looking, you know, relatively good. Um, I thought it would be more bushy, to be honest with you, but you know, uh, we'll see what happens. As you can see, some of these roots are running all the way down to the bottom of the pot. Um, and that's that's a sign of a really healthy plant. But in order to do the propagation that we want to do today, we're going to have to find a way to get it out, really. Okay, we've got one propagation here. If I can get this in, that is. <laughs> After quite the battle, we've got a lovely two-leaf top cutting over here with some new growth coming in at the bottom. This has done quite the number so you can see that the the roots are sort of curved in and out of the moss pole so unfortunately i think i'm gonna have to cut it open just to get those out oh, there we go it's out oh my god it's out there we go so that's one two plants or well, three plants we've got another one here as well actually so we've got three plants so far perfect look at that lovely one two We've got the mother plant, which I think I'm just going to pop back into the exact same pot, potting up the plant like so, making sure the roots are submerged, just like that. There we go. And Therium cuticuens, that's the base cutting, the mother plant. Put that to the side for now. I've got some pond left over from uh, another plant that I took down recently. So I'm just going to use that instead of opening up the new bag. And... I'm gonna try to get the plant in a really good, comfortable 
position, hopefully with the roots facing down. And then I'm gonna backfill. So just like so with that pond or that semi-hydro mix. The second will be this top cutting, then we backfill. This one has no roots on it at all. So I think it's definitely gonna need that semi-hydro set up to encourage the root growth. Okay, so add that in. Last but not least is this mid cutting with the ginormous root assist, <laughs> which I just know will not fit into one of these small pots. So I've got this clear pot, it's about four inches maybe, they're about, and I think that should do it. I don't want them too close to each other, just in case um, one root rots, I don't want it to sort of spread it to the others. I'm going to try as much as possible just to sort of put them at different levels of the pot and then we're going to backfill. That's all of it. That's four Ethereum cuter cuents all potted up. So that brings us to the end of a much longer than expected repot. We've got my, I've got five Ethereum cuter cuents at this point looking amazing um, and lots of different Hoyas and filled and one philodendron um, that has been potted up. So there you go, that's my Saturday in a nutshell. It's one of the biggest things I wanted to tick off my list and I've done so, so thank you for being part of that with me. I really appreciate every single one of you who watch my videos on a regular basis. I do see you, I, I, I love reading your comments. So yeah, just thank you for being part of this journey and making it so enjoyable for me. But as always, I'm gonna sign off and say, keep planting.